The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and Smithsonian Center for Education and Museum Studies. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Associate Professor Rebecca Portis received her BA from Dillard University, MA from Xavier University, focusing heavily upon literature. She began her teaching career out of graduate school at Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois in 1995, and has taught middle school and high school English as well. At Montgomery College, she began as an adjunct at the Germantown campus in 2001, and in 2007, left MCPS to work at the Rockville campus full-time. In the past few years, it has been her goal to realign her approach and goals to enhance her commitment to educate with even more fluency and innovation, and it is no doubt that her participation with the Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program greatly aided in the process. As a result, she is currently seeking more education, training, and opportunities in writing, critical thinking, inspired by more rich and complex experiences beyond the traditional. First, I want to say that this has been the most awesome opportunity that I've had since I arrived at MC. So if you are here and you're going to do this um, Smithsonian Fellowship, it is, it's worth it. So that's the first thing. The other thing is I'm going to ask that you bear with me because I teach English and um, most of what I'm going to share is um, a lot of my students' writing because I think um, it, for EN 101, we kind of have um, this idea that some of us have this idea that maybe they're not, you know, ready. But um, this experience, um, I think, shows that the students, if you give them an opportunity, they will rise to it. So without further ado, I'm going to have help from my daughter with this presentation um, since I have brought her here. So we're going to start. This is a little thought on writing. Writing is something that requires people to have a broad knowledge that, and acquire some skills that will enable them to write about some topics, especially in college level writing. Learning outside allows students to see things in real dimension, dimension and be able to mentally and physically touch them. So that was from one of my students um, from EM 101A. So my, the title of my um, approach to this is Cultural Hybridity at Montgomery College, the Smithsonian Promoting Critical Thinking to Transform the Identity of the American Composition Course. And this is the quote that I headed my propo first proposal with. I do not wish my house to be walled on all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I want the cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible. Mahatma Gandhi. And then this is my own little piece. <laughs> and I won't read everything. This is the first day of the fall. <laughs> and the theme of my course, the beginning of a personal journey. So basically, I, the, I'm pretty animated when I start a class. Um, I have to kind of calm my students down because I expect a lot. So to get them to go with the program, I just kind of lay it out there. So I told them the very first day that they've signed up for a class that's going to change them. And, um, and I want them to participate no matter what. So I didn't give them a choice in this. But I did share with them a motivational video, and then I shared this quote with them. So then they received the syllabus, because of course when they signed up for the class, they did not know this was a Smithsonian-led class, and it was too late to sign up for another one. So they were stuck. So the, after the first couple of days, um, we did an icebreaker as an introduction to the class, and basically I gave them in their syllabus before they even came to my class, they had a list of questions, and I used those questions to put them on the spot. I basically asked them to come up to the front of the class and started with the whole idea of identity. And I just basically ran, you know, gave them random um, opportunity to answer a question. And they did. And then I attempted a purification process of all of their nasty thinking and writing habits. 
So here is the first personal connection. I learned that being able to learn outside a classroom can be very helpful, and it can actually provide us much more information that will help us in our futures. Going to museums and experiencing different cultures, points of view, helped me expand my knowledge and ideas of the United States. So many of my students in my class uh, last fall were from other countries, or they were first generation here. And that was great for this whole project because they brought in different ideas. So this was just, you know, of course, this, this is not that person who said that, but I, I did get a picture of her. But anyway, as, you, as we start off, you can see the LL Cool J again is like the, the highlight of the National Portrait Gallery. And I began with critical thinking. So what is, the heck is critical thinking? So I gave them a definition of what I wanted to focus on for the, for the semester because I'm, I'm passionate about this whole thing. I don't like to teach a class where I'm bored. So if they're giving me just kind of, you know, just standard answers for everything, I lose interest. So I just had to start off class by explaining to them how I want them to go about thinking for this project. So I gave them a definition. Um, critical thinking is defined by reasonable, reflectable, responsible, and skillful thinking that is focused on deciding what, we, what to do, believe, or do. But critical thinking is also defined as practicing the detachment and distancing to question the conventional wisdom, and even negatively as debunk debunking for the sake of one-upsmanship. So they went on through this de definition for themselves, and we talked about that. So here's a personal connection. Okay, another one? Get her involved. <laughs> During this semester, I had the opportunity to learn outside the classroom. This allowed me to not only grasp concepts of American society and American culture, but to truly immerse myself in my learning experience. The ability to leave, leave the classroom gave me the chance to think about my nation and my writing subjects more clearly and with new perspective. This student right here actually did write this um, connection and um, was just one great example of constantly through the semester of how um, she grew. Um, watching her forced me to just kind of take even a, a closer look at my other students and see them evolve through this process. And she did. She just, she just um, emailed me the other day asking for some information from last fall. So I'm happy with her. So other prep that I did, I taught the writing process before we ever started our um, journey to the museums. And the way that I teach the writing process in my class is that um, I made up a few things for them. They have to al always know what their topic, audience, and purpose is. And then the process itself asks them for, um, I give them five steps. And it's, it's very similar to what they learn in high school. But I ask them to generate ideas. And that is the, the biggest part of the writing process for me. That is when you, um, you know, you understand the, the topic, you go out and you research, you interview people, you, you know, you sit down with people and try to come up with ideas. And that's a great way that the, muse the museum worked with my program. I asked them questions they had not given a lot of thought to, which were the introduction questions. I introduced them to the reading that revealed um, attitudes about identity. So not only did they have to go to the museum, they actually had a text from my class as well. So they had to read essays as well as go to the museum and relate all of that information into their writing. And then finally, we began our museum trips. I put this guy up here because he's a star. This dude is on crutches, and so <laughs> he made his way down to the museum, like I said, no matter what, and um, he showed the others that it can be done. So for all field trips to the museum, students were provided an activity sheet that gave them instructions on obtaining research that they would later use for the writing assignments. Um, they kept journals. They had to answer questions. They had to analyze things that they found at the museum. And then the first activity, which was a great idea, came up in our, one of our meetings, and as well as me driving and listening to NPR, there was a race car project. 
So one student submitted a six word memoir. This is the student that actually said this is actually sitting in the standing in the middle with the scarf on. She says she has a brand new perspective for why America has to offer and what I have to offer. What made everything so clear was taking a class trip to the Smithsonian Museums, a whole new view on American culture, and it helped me find a piece of myself since I have trouble knowing who I am. So we went to the American history. The first field trip was the American history and the National Portrait Gallery. So these are just some pictures from there. That's Betsy Ross. Yes, that lady. <laughs> and then these are just some pictures from that day. Um, if you're doing this program next fall, I am I, I'm slow, a slow thinker. Of course, I did not have my phone out like as much through this process, nor did I record everything I should have. And I thought about that around November, I suppose. <laughs> so I begged all the students, send me whatever you have. I have to give praise to my fabulous docent because um, I had not planned to have one the first trip. And um, we were lucky. We ran into this lady and she, she waited around until somebody could come and take her place. And she took us on this, this tour that had you know, nothing to do with the, the tour that she usually gives, but she, I mean, passionate. She knew about everything. And then she took us to places that I, I needed the students to see. The next place we went because of the um, because the the rave reviews of going with me I don't know why because I did not buy dinner or lunch or anything um, the students you know decided we want to go with you so a Saturday field trip was formed and we went to the initial field trip um, locations and then I fit in the National Portrait Gallery I mean the Natural Museum Natural History Museum. So our very first essay, and for those of you all who are thinking, oh my gosh, what kind of work did they do before they, you know, before they started their first essay? Um, normally, in EM 101, we start with a narrative, and I decided to switch that and make that the last paper. That being said, you know, it kind of scared them because they didn't have that first A paper under their belt. But all I cared about was that they have the experience of just doing something that they've never done. So the first paper that I assigned them was a definition. With every assignment that I gave with this, um, you know, I did this project the entire semester. I didn't do just one lesson. I just did the entire, all three classes the entire semester. Um, what I would do is give them an assignment sheet and I told them how I wanted them to think. And that fell in line with their critical thinking. So when they received the assignment sheet, this was there first. I wanted them, them to think about things. And so in this one, I wanted them to, them to think about, you know, human beings. Um, we, have, we all have our very own personal aspects. Um, once we have figured out those personal traits and characteristics, then it's time to look into the community for other things. And the bottom line is to get them, them to see themselves lo on a lo local basis, national basis, and glo in, in the global society. And then the last question is, how is identity valuable? So they basically you know, took a long time in the pre-writing stage, the very first step of the writing process. Because after the first step is them organizing and then drafting and all of that. But we spent a lot of time in the first step. So here's the very first prompt I gave them. What is identity and, and the value or significance of identity? And based on your claim, what is the negative impact on the American society when we deny people to exist in that identity? What is the positive impact on the uh, American society when we allow people to exist in that identity? So I'm going to share, bear with me, but I think it's worth hearing the very first writing of a student. She says, one of the strongest arguments against maintaining identities, especially first-generation immigrant identities, is the risk of being treated as a second-class citizen. I can speak on this issue using my own experiences because at, for, at, as a first-generation immigrant, I understand how it feels to be on the receiving end of discrimination. 
It is incredibly unpleasant and deeply scarring experience that comes from a basic misunderstanding of one's person's expre pers one person's expression of his or her identity and the gap between this expression and what is considered to be normal. It is a misinterpretation that because some people talk, walk, or behave differently from what the majority are used to, that such a person is inferior and deserve to be treated as lesser human beings. When America was first discovered, the natives did not have the option to adapt to the ways of the Europeans, so their way of life and their identities were almost completely eradicated. In today's society, one has options and must think hard about the consequences of retaining one's social culture or religious identity in terms of cost measured by victimization or an equal treatment. The easier path many propose is to integrate with the identity of the majority and live like an equal. Experiences occur and beliefs are formed within a social context, however, and the social context is generally mediated by cultural norms. Abraham Lincoln realized in 1862 that to restore the Union, slavery must end. Thus, on December 6, 1865, the 13th Amendment were added to the United States Constitution abolishing slavery. Although African Americans were free of slavery forms, they were not set, yet, not set free yet. They were intimidated, segregated, and disrespected. On December of 1955, Martin Luther King accepted the leadership of the first great Negro nonviolent demonstration of contemporary times in the United States. The boycott lasted 382 days. On December 21st, 1956, after the Supreme Court of the United States had declared unconstitutional the laws requiring segregation on black buses, Negroes and whites rode the buses as equals. The ideals for this organization he took from Christianity, its operational techniques from Gandhi. Martin Luther King helped his nation to overcome political, religion, and civil changes. And on August 28, 1963, people from different backgrounds came together to demand justice after a centennial of the Emancipation Proclamation, America, Proclamation. Americans needed to be reminded that the nation's long pursuit for liberty and equality for all had been forgotten. This student from Columbia got that whole message from going to the Change for America exhibit. Okay. Um, and she was very, you know, very candid about the fact that she didn't know. And so that was her writing. That's an EM 101A student. Here's a personal connection from another um, student, international student as well. Um, I don't know, want to know if I want to read all that, but anyway, um, I'll just skip down. She says, this class was probably the best class that I had this semester because my professor was absolutely hilarious, while the rest of my professors were not, were not as interactive with their students. I think that this is not only a good experience for the students, but also for the, our professor, because everyone shared different opinions and different cultures with one another. I thought that was a good point that she made to point out something about me. Um, because lots of times students come into the classroom and, and think that the teacher knows everything. This was definitely a learning experience for me as well as for them. So I'm glad she made that connection as well. So here was our Saturday compromise. Um, initial re reluctance quickly wore off as students allowed themselves to get into the questions I provided. They had great interest after hearing the reviews of the first field trip. And so this is where I said earlier that we visited. <coughs> another connection here, um, another international student is from Africa. Um, this one's a real, it's funny, but I'll read it towards the bottom one. It says, the identity questions and introduction in the beginning of the class opened us to each individual and showed each of their personalities, their similarities and differences. Then there were the artifact presentations from, from one of the museum's visits and the proposal visual presentation. I loved it because it was a test to see whether you did the assignment and knew what you were talking about. The presentation also showed the amount of time and effort you put into your work. And it helped us to improve our oral presentation skills and the confidence that comes with it. This student had a rough time giving me things on time. But when it was all, well, when he did his visual presentation, he was a man that day. And um, I was very proud of him. So the next essay that I assigned um, was, an, was the first of two analysis essays that I gave them. And um, of course, as a student who's standing by one of the exhibits, 
I think that's that's the gun. Yeah. Something. Like that. Yes. Um, how much time have you given to thinking about who you really are? Again, these are the questions I want them to think about before they start their writing process. So. Um, what makes you different from others? How do others benefit from having you in their life? How do you benefit society? This particular um, prompt basically asks them who they, who are they, and how does who they are benefit this changing society? And again, this was a personal journey for them, so I wanted them to do a lot of soul searching. And so I'll read an excerpt by Miss Chang. She's a Chinese American. One of the excerpts from her paper is, in order for society to function, there must be fairness among the people and, and the government. These days, laws are getting passed where homosexuals are able to get married to one another in many states in the United States of America. However, it has not always been like this, and they used to be rejected by the society. From, it, from the exhibit, The Struggle for Justice, the Mattachin Society held a sip-in movement to protest drinks being served to homosexuals at a bar. In the past, homosexuals were not be even being served drinks at bars. They were fundamentally rejected from the public, yet homosexuals are people too. The only difference is that some of their lifestyles are different than others. People need to remember that it is, not, that it is only fair that everyone is treated equally, like the Constitution says. Um, totally left field, of course. This was a, a student that was very interested in getting her A, but I never once thought that this would come from her, um, that she even paid attention. And something about that particular exhibit struck her, and she wrote about it. And so I um, thought that was a good thing to share. And then here's another one. David Lorenzo fabulous student um, evolved over time, but I'm going to read his whole thing because he's an international business student, and usually we don't think of them as being very interested in class like this. They just take it to meet, you know, a, a credit. The outside of the classroom aspect of this semester I felt was interesting. Not only was it the first time I have ever done something like that, and by something like that, I mean that it was a part of our regular curriculum, but it really went hand in hand with what we were learning. I am mostly accustomed to sitting through lectures or obtaining my information from an online source or a textbook. Techniques like the one our professor introduced us to help broaden the minds of many young people. This broadening of the minds is, if applied nationally and on a global scale, could yield unprecedented results. <laughs> America is filled with so many different cultures now, and it's good to see students making an effort to really try and be team players. It is important for us young people in this country to recognize where we came from as Americans and where we are going as Americans. As Americans, we have to see ourselves as a team and everyone has to get equal playing time. The museum aspect of this class definitely helped aid us in getting a handle of true American society. So I thought that was pretty great connection he made. And later I'll share another thing with him just because of the fact he was so passionate about his business but he managed to figure out how to make the connections in an English class. To illustrate for, forging America's identity through critical counters and cross-cultural connection, I used more art to make a connection. So this film, Beasts of the Southern Wild, became a highlight of mine last January, and I tried to use it in everything that I could find. So I took the spring of 2013 and, and made that my entire theme, and then I just I was lost because I was just like, I can't you know even think about not using this movie for the fall. So I did, and I was able to figure it out. There is a cross connection. In the film, The Beast of the Southern Wild, it's about people having the courage to love and defend the people in the place they call home. And then at the National Natural History Museum, came upon this piece. We visited four museums and 15 exhibits that spoke to the similar themes, showcasing innate courage, love, strength, and determination. And this particular one where you have this Neanderthal um, you know, in, in that position, as well as sticking, I think it's sticking out his hand, but he looks like he's offering something. I found those two to be, because both pictures are pre very primitive looking, um, I found that to be a great connection there. And so I was able to to get them to write on both. 
So here's the second analysis. Um, at this point, they're able to use whatever information they came um, into contact with at the museum, as well as our readings and all of that discussion, and they had to implement it into this essay. So I wanted them to think about what is being exposed about America when thinking about the issues confronted. How is America impacted? So analysis essay two. If you were to ask me some things that I learned along the way in doing this project, um, one of the things is, is that all students are not created equal as we know. So while there was a lot of passion from the students, some, I, what, I got, what I started to see in the writing was that some of them were great with handling very specific goals, and then the others were able to be way more creative and tap into to experiences that they've had in other places. So at that point, I decided to make two prompts, give them two options. Um, I explained to them that both of them are higher level thinking prompts, but one is way more structured than the other. So the, usually the first prompt was the one, the, the very challenging one. And this is where they took the movie and took um, a quote from the movie, the whole universe depends on everything fitting together just right. If one piece busts, even the smallest piece, the entire universe gets busted. Using analysis, explain the meaning of this statement as it relates to America and its current situation. And they had to integrate the research from the museum. The very last part of that prompt means that they actually have to be well um, educated, well, not well, but at least understanding some things that are happening in our current, you know, current events. They have to be, they have to read the paper, listen to the news, and you know, all of that. So some kids, students took that on. Or, here's the more specific, find one thing confronted in the movie Beasts of the Southern Wild and explain its impact on American society. And I just asked them to relate museum research to their response. So I'm going to share. This is the, the, the student earlier who could just take anything and just make it fabulous. Her writing is, um, is very, um, what do I want to say, just provocative. Um, she's, a she's a really deep thinker. And, um, and I appreciated that about what things that she shared. So here's a piece from hers. She says, the premise state is so simply by Hush Puppy. She took the first one. Um, the premise stated so simply by Hush Puppy and Beasts of the Southern Wild that the whole universe depends on everything fitting together just right is a childlike view of how essential it is for our nation to come together. America continues to ignore climate change and evidence of changes in weather phenomenon. This disregard creates greater energy dependence, thus causing higher emissions and worsening global warming. The similar, similar to Beasts of the Southern Wild, the museum exhibit Forces of Change shows the relationship between ecological change, climate change, and cultural change, and discusses how these three changing elements of society are interdependent and affect each other. A cultural or ecological change causes climate change. For example, in the film, we see scenes interspersed of chunks of ice falling from glaciers in the South Pole. This ecological change is a result of a high level of carbon emissions and causes the Earth to experience higher temperatures and treacherous atmospheric activity. Our behavior and energy uses, use becomes a part of the atmosphere and negatively impacts our environment. So that was just a piece. But I thought, again, this, this student is not into science at all. But everything she looked at, she could just take it apart and figure out how to make connections with it. That is what I wanted to see from my students. So here are just some pictures of us at the American in Indian Museum. And some more. And then here's a personal connection. That is, this is the guy who said this. Learning outside of a traditional classroom setting is important for actually understanding what you are learning. Having the theme of identity in my mind when going to the museum gave me a different perspective of the exhibits and information presented. Now when I see someone from a different culture, I analyze them. The trips, trips reinforced and strengthened my understanding of what I had learned.
because I was physically applying it. And the same goes for this course. The essay readings about identity helped me learn about the struggles of different cultures through their writing. But the museum visits helped me understand what we were writing about. So then they got to the classification essay. Think about the exhibits you have seen, the things about the exhibits and artifacts that you have written down. What is important about them? What did they speak to you? How are they relevant? What can they teach society? Here are the two prompts. Referencing at least three exhibits, including the upcoming exhibit, identify at least three aspects of your chosen exhibits that can have great significance to forging America's identity. Now they were doing the work for me at this point. And then there was explain in detail how three exhibits or three artifacts help broaden your view of what American society can offer its diverse citizenry to improve our relationships. So I'm going to share a couple by these two people. Again, David Lorenzo, he's from Spain. His family's from Spain. And this is a Latina American, um, Kara. So David says... When we log on the internet without expecting anything to be censored, truth of the matter is we are lucky to live in America. There are countries like Syria that censor what their citizens can and cannot view on the internet. America once was like this, switching focus to an item that to the average America, American would have no particular opinion on, we find the typewriter. In the same 1945 post-war and contemporary American exhibit, you find the typewriter. America itself once went through a period of restricted speech. There, many bouts in the, there, many bouts in the early and mid 1900s with regards to free speech. So that was his his take. I think I'm gonna stop there. Yeah. So he just kind of went on in and found a typewriter. I did not necessarily tell them what they had to pick, so I had no idea I was gonna see any any reference to the typewriter. But I thought that was a good connection. One more time. And then Miss Maribali. I'm going to read the introduction to her paper, her classification paper. She says, the Smithsonian Institution is the largest museum and research complex, which was established to increase the diffusion of knowledge among the community. In the American History Museum, the audience can learn how this country has gone through so many changes, such as the abolishment of slavery and the civil rights movement, which depicts a sense of determination and equality in our identity. Similarly, in the Natural History Museum, we can learn about the human evolution, what our ancestors endured, and the evidence of hard work in their bones. Also, people can see the evolution of our customs, what our natives did to build a way of living like we know it now, and also how many native tribes have tried to keep their customs so their culture can survive among this industrialized society. Throughout many different cultures, we can see the concept of humanity, determination, and equality which all connect to the history of the United States in a way to provoke a stronger sense of identity and belonging in this country. She's a first generation. She made her connection. So at this point, this is a picture of a mind that is supposed to be thinking about all of the stuff that they came across. So this is the final um, project for my class, the proposal essay, and there were two parts. They had a visual presentation as well as a writing. So they were supposed to think on everything, and I wanted to show their minds on art. The first prompt, propose a new definition of identity and the reason for it. And the second, propose an idea for why cultural representation is important for American progress. Now, this is the proposal presentation portion. And basically, those are the guidelines for it. Um, they had to do a Prezi or a PowerPoint. Um, it, must have, it had to be six minutes. You know, it had to be a visual. They had to practice it, all of those things. And then they had to give it in front of class. This was um, someone's Prezi on a new America. And so they got up and they, they did, took the challenge of doing the Prezi. And then this is our international business guy. Um, he did his, again, pulling together business and um, the theme of our class. And I'm just going to share with you his thesis. 
His thesis says, in economics, specifically microeconomics, there is a term that is used to describe whether or not a country can produce a product more efficiently or a lower cost than another country. That term is called comparative advantage. The co country proceeds to export the product it produces. Trade is beneficial because it saves, saves the said country from doing everything itself. Much like comparative advantage comes the term cultural representation. Cultural representation is necessary for American progress, with more different types of people contributing to the daily ins and outs of what we call life. It makes for a more efficient process. There are several political, social, and economic factors that contribute to this more efficient process. And this process can lead to an overall progression in America. That was our business major, so. And then this is how to achieve equality for, for women. And this is my student that said this, just to share a little piece of this. Um, and, and I'm not going to even share. Bottom line is she basically took the civil, civil rights changing for America piece and use it to argue why we should be focused on giving women rights in this country. So her whole, her whole purpose was to show how we, take, we took the um, civil rights movement and now it has evolved to a bigger um, movement for a lot of people who find themselves um, disenfranchised. So this was a narrative essay, the very last essay, and this is the, the question that I gave. Tell me about your experience this semester how they immerse themselves in culture, seeking meaning to their life in America through critical thought. And so here's some final thoughts. The experience I have had in this class has been the best I've ever had in my college class. I did learn a lot of things that I ignored or that I considered not to be relevant enough. <laughs> Moreover, what makes this class special and, and amazing is it allows the students to be able to think outside of the box and embrace new ideals, ideas and culture. What makes this class to stand out is the museum visits that Professor Portis has incorporated in the program. I really appreciated that idea because it's something new for me to have never had a class where the teacher took the students to visit museums. Moreover, those visits were really beneficial for me because they allowed me to be more aware of the diversity in the United States and the history of the country. Those visits were very crucial for me because coming from another culture, I did not quite understand or even know the American culture. I think that the fact of going and learning outside of the traditional class setting was very helpful. It enables me to be able to have a new perception and broaden my knowledge. And he is also from Africa. And these are just pictures. At first, I thought taking this course would consist of only writing essay after essay. However, by learning outside of traditional classroom setting, we actually got to see real artifacts and pieces of history up close for ourselves. This caused me to realize that the Smithsonian Museums are not only worthy of tourist attraction, but they are also a wonderful resource when having a conduct research. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is one of my classes. Um, just quickly, she says, many of us never give much importance to assimilate in this country. Most people are here with the wrong purpose of only making money. Since America is the land of opportunity, it's so sad that most people don't allow themselves the great opportunity to learn about this culture and at the same time to give out to society what it needs. Um, they were asked the question at the beginning about acculturation and assimilation, and it made them think about how they actually feel about America. And then our, I think this was the final one. Um, each of us were asked questions about our culture and identity and being an American. Because of these questions, I started to think more about myself as an individual in America. These are our credits. These are all the exhibits that we, we saw as a group, but students were encouraged to go on their own, and they did. <laughs> it was pretty ambitious, but they did it. <laughs> that was the National Book Award, I mean, day festival. <laughs> And that's the end. Thank you.